What happened to promenade decks, and what purposes did they serve? For those who don't know, this is a promenade deck. It is a clear and walkable space aboard a passenger ship that allows people to stroll continuously from one area to another. Most commonly, promenade decks encircled the superstructure of a ship, which allowed passengers to walk in a loop, kind of like a jogging track, but made for a leisurely pace. Not so much for exercise as just being in an open area where you can move as opposed to sitting. But not all promenade decks were the same. Many of them didn't actually allow for a full loop to be made, sometimes just a horseshoe shape. Some promenade decks, like on the RMS Olympic, were open to the elements, while others, like on the RMS Queen Mary, were fully enclosed. The Titanic is an example of a ship with a promenade that is half open and half sheltered. In the earliest years of steamship ocean liners, the only place on the ship where you could really get some air and walk around was on the upper decks, sometimes called a boat deck. But these smaller vessels were rolling with the ocean, and if the weather were disagreeable, you wouldn't want to be out there. Eventually, as ships became larger, designers were able to allocate space around the superstructure for people to walk. This became a useful design feature because as ocean liners were built taller, the superstructure needed to recede away from the hull. Concentrating the weight of each deck of the superstructure towards the ship's centerline aided the vessel's stability at sea. The space left over from this stepped-back design was open enough to create the walking area that passengers desired. Let's not forget that during this era, there was a prominent culture of classism. Promenade decks, at first, were only for first-class passengers. But as ships became larger, there was room to create open-air spaces for other classes. First class would get the bigger promenade, while second class was given a much smaller promenade that wrapped around a separated part of the superstructure designed only for second class. On certain ships, third class passengers might have their own open space located in the well decks of a ship or even on the poop deck. If you were in fourth class, it was highly unlikely that you would have an open air space to promenade around. On ships like Lusitania and Mauritania, the separate superstructure and promenade for second class was a design feature that remained. Second class even had their own boat deck. However, Olympic class ships had a design that integrated a separated second class zone while still incorporating the architecture into one large superstructure. While there were bulkheads keeping the two areas distinctly segregated, from the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell that the whole ship didn't belong to first class. On Titanic, second class had their own area of boat deck to roam around and get sunlight. Then, on B deck, they had a horseshoe-shaped promenade that was open. On C deck, they had their own enclosed promenade that was also horseshoe-shaped and connected on either side with a narrow passage. If we take a look at the RMS Queen Mary, which went into service in 1936, we see some interesting changes to the design of promenade decks. The Mary's first-class promenade deck wrapped around the whole superstructure in a big loop, and it was fully enclosed. When you walk around the forward end, you had the option to step outside and get some air, or you could remain behind the protective bulkhead. Queen Mary didn't have a boat deck. Instead, she had what Cunard called a sun deck. This is because the lifeboats were suspended high above the sun deck, permitting fantastic views of the ocean. The sun deck on Queen Mary featured an outdoor promenade. This served the exact same purpose as the enclosed one on the deck below. But the outdoor promenade also featured a large open space just aft of the veranda grill, where deck chairs could be arranged for first-class passengers to get some sunlight and enjoy some tea. Second class on Queen Mary had two promenades because they were not allowed any open spaces on the sun deck. Both promenades were half enclosed and half open. Both of them formed a loop using an interior passage and an exterior wraparound open space. And just like Titanic, the promenades were completely separate from the second class public rooms that they surrounded. Third class had what Cunard called a promenade, but really it was just a large open space at the base of the forward mast. It was only pleasant to walk around on days of good weather. 
If a particular voyage was fully booked in third class, and if the weather was fair, the crew may have allowed the passengers to take the stairs down to the well deck, which sat between the third class promenade and the forecastle. So those are some basic examples of promenade decks and how they were situated on ocean liners. After the decline of the liners, many early cruise ships maintained a promenade deck designed for their passengers. But you may have noticed that not many cruise ships today have these kinds of promenades. Sure, they still exist, but it's more likely to be a short, walkable space that has views of the ocean obscured by equipment. So what happened to promenade decks? Why aren't they still a prominent feature of passenger ships today? Well, the answer is, they are. But promenade decks have evolved again. This time they are in the form of a centralized shopping area aboard a cruise ship. We call these new promenade decks a centerline promenade, because instead of creating a full loop, it is just a single walking space that follows the center line of the ship. And many of these centerline promenades allow for an atrium above that permit a view for inside cabins that otherwise wouldn't have one. These atrium view cabins also earn the ship more money as opposed to an inside cabin without a porthole. Now, as you can see, cruise ship companies were able to take a feature of an ocean liner that didn't generate revenue and turn it into a profitable walking space. But it's just not the same. You don't always get a view of the ocean or feel the ocean breeze going past. And while you walk, you are being bombarded with the temptation to spend more money. Some cruise ships have installed a jogging track, but this doesn't quite fit the definition of a promenade. That being said, a promenade deck can be used as a jogging track. I hope that sufficiently confused you. The last ocean liner sailing the seas is the Queen Mary II. It seems some of my viewers think the Queen Mary and Queen Mary II are the same ship, but they're not. The Queen Mary went into service in 1936 and retired in 1967. The Queen Mary II went into service in 2004 and is still going strong. Since the Queen Mary II is a true ocean liner, the designers of the ship left space for a proper outdoor promenade deck that encircles the superstructure in a continuous loop. You can see excellent views of the ocean while you walk or jog around. It's a great place to get some air and have time to think. I hope you enjoyed this brief history lesson about promenade decks. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel for more videos about the age of steam.